Welcome to my session about distributed transactions. My name is Martin Stefanko. I work as a senior software engineer now in Red Hat, mostly on middleware technologies like Wi-Fi, EAP, Quarkus, Mori. If you heard about these projects, since last year I'm also a microprofile committer. I particularly like working on the specifications and also starting with Jakarta EE right now. And I'm a big microservices enthusiast. And if you are curious about stuff that I'm working on, you can find me on Twitter under this handle. So what we are going to talk about today are transactions. And before we start, I would like to play a little guessing game with you. Can you guess how many Bitcoin transactions there were yesterday, like performed yesterday? The number. That's a funny thing. But there is around, always around 300,000 Bitcoin transactions per day. So this was taken yesterday from a site. However, you came here today to hear about something different. And that something different is called a saga. And we will get to it, what it is, but I would like to rather show you the implementation that we are working on in MicroProfile, which is called Long Running Actions, or LRA in short. However, to start just typing, it's really hard to comprehend, uh, comprehend it, so I will just do 15 minutes of some theory, and then we will jump to ID. So you are probably familiar with the typical ACID transactions, so we, I will try to compare what you know with what the saga is. During my talk, I will use this simple example that we have a transaction that we are going somewhere on a business trip and we need to book a flight, book a hotel, and book a car. We want all three of these, unless, uh, otherwise we are not going. So, what the ACID transaction stands for, you probably already know this. Atomicity, all or nothing for property, basically I want all of the things in the transactions to happen or none of them to happen. Consistency, if we start the transaction in a consistent system, we need to end it in a consistent system. So it cannot end in a system when we have flight and we didn't book a car. Isolation, if we have multiple transactions that are performed in parallel, they cannot influence each other. So basically, if we have transactions A and B, for A, it must look like that the B hasn't started yet or it's already finished. And durability is just saying that if the transactions finish successfully or not so successfully, it needs to be somewhat persistent. How we achieve ACID transactions today is the only way how to achieve it is by uh, usage of consensus protocols. And the most known one that you are familiar, familiar with from the university is your two-phase uh, commit protocol. And actually, this is still the mostly used protocol for any transaction processing done today. However, there are other, but they are rather slightly a little slightly more complex than 2PC, and people are trying to avoid them. But there, there are some solutions that are solving some of the problems of 2PC available. However, for the simplicity reasons and for my demonstration, 2PC is more than suitable, so I will stick for it, with it for my today talk. So we probably know how 2PC works. Just to really quickly rephrase it, two phases. In the first phase, we have this two-phase commit uh, coordinator, which is a standalone service. And I am already talking microservices, so we have airline microservice, auto microservice, and car rental microservice. So in the first phase, the transaction is passed somewhere to this system, and basically the coordinator or someone else will ask for the individual resources in the particular microservices. These uh, resources are allocated in the individual services, and some form of locks are taken. So you are not actually buying the flight or the ticket for a flight, you are just locking it for someone else to not take it. If you are able to lock all the resources, you will just send some OK message back to the coordinator. And in a second phase, if everyone uh, responded successfully, so the transactions can be actually performed, uh, the coordinator start the phase two of the two-phase commit protocol and send to every service, yes, go ahead and actually perform the operation that was requested. So the locks are removed and actually the tickets are bought, basically. So you are paying money now in this uh, particular time. If so, everything successful, again, only confirmation and we can say to the caller that the transaction was successful, we are holding all three resources and we are good to go. If something doesn't go so well, so we cannot, for instance, uh, lock the car or, or reserve the car because there are more, no more car legs uh, left or something, 
uh, we need to abort all the resources because the whole transaction cannot be completed. So we are sending abort message now from the coordinator. Again, locks are removed. Uh, basically, the resources are just forgotten. We are not doing anything. OK message is sent back, and we are finished with the failure. So the caller can now repeat the transaction in a later time or do some other action. However, what is the biggest problem with uh, LRA coordinate uh, or 2FC or basically consensus protocols in general, especially if we move into network, so these are really standalone services communicating throughout the network, is that things on the network dies a lot. So if the coordinator fails or it cannot be contacted after the first phase, we are basically now in a state that all of these three services are take, uh, holding locks on these resources and there may be other services, other uh, customers which are requesting these uh, resources and they may be coming and coming however you cannot allow them to actually get to this resource so if this is the last uh, ticket for this flight there may be four people waiting for this flight nobody ever paid for this ticket <laughs> yet but you cannot give it, to, give it to anybody so you are losing money or even worse you will leave all of the other requests to wait for you to actually uh, you, you cannot say if you ever will lose this log, so we will just keep them waiting. And I had a talk yesterday about reactive and reactive systems, and the most important stuff in, t in today's modern uh, enterprise applications for many people is responsiveness. So if you want a user to click something and wait for three or five seconds, they get nervous. <laughs> and you don't really want to get to these situations. So here is where Saga comes in. I would like to say that this is a new idea, but actually this was first published in uh, 1987 by Hector Garcia Molina and Kenneth Salem, <laughs> where they described this pattern in uh, long-running database transactions, because this taking of logs, even in databases, when you needed to log the whole table for periods of days, it was not acceptable, even in 1987. So, uh, what the saga actually is, it's still a transaction, but it is not ACID anymore. Saga is basically, again, a set of operations, but it allows individual operations to interleave with each other, which is not possible with two-phase commit, because we are either committing at the same time or working at the same time. So now, when I will have this example, I will actually go call the app on service, and I will pay the money, buy the ticket. So now I'm in a state that I have a ticket for a flight, but I still haven't called the car rental and hotel service yet. So I am in inconsistent system, isolation is broken uh, right away, and how the saga deals with this kind of situation is by a compensation action or compensations. Basically, compensation is only a reverse action or semantical undo of the originally performed operation. That may be whatever you like. It may be in a, if your original operation is to add a row to a database, the reverse semantical undo compensation would be just delete this row. However, if your operation is something more complex or something which is not idempotent, not irreversible by opposite action, like sending an email, I cannot undo sending an email. However, this is a semantical undo. Basically, this means that you are defining what the undo action should be. So if I originally send an email in my transaction, I can send follow-up email just saying that the previous email is canceled or something similar. And this is totally up to you. You are defining your uh, services. You are defining your compensation. So you know what you are doing in your original operation, and you know how to cancel it. If you are interested in really how this pattern can be put into a practice that is a really interesting tool by Katie McCaffrey, where she describes how they use Saga pattern in a Halo game, in multiplayer, to collect a statistic or something, it was really interesting to see that this can be actually used. And pe uh, people are not always in the need of full asset. They will get to it. So, we again take our original transaction and we will try to put it into a Saga. So, now we only have these three services, we lose the coordinator for now. And we just send the Saga definition, or this can be a JSON to the first service. The first service will allocate the resource, find the ticket, and actually go ahead and pay the money. So now we are in state, we already have the flight ticket, we can mark it in a JSON somewhere or in the, uh, in the Saga that is passed away. 
And now we are in, a state, in, in an inconsistent state, basically, already. This is already breaking ASIC. Then you will send the Saga to other services and the same operation. Again, you will pay the money for the ticket, uh, uh, sorry, for the hotel room. And again, you will just put it uh, back to the car rental service and you will pay money for the car and you are done. Basically, if everything was successful, so you went through the whole chain of operations and all operations were successful, you are finished. You are again in a consistent system and everything, everything is good. You are happy, your customers are happy. The funny part is when something fails. So we are again in the same phase. We are already paid money for flight and for a hotel, but we cannot book a car because again reasons. So now we have a problem because we already paid some money and we cannot actually complete the business trip. So how the saga deals with it, it will just start calling the compensation actions, but in reverse order. So your individual operations can depend on each other. So we will just send cancel saga message back to the hotel service and semantical action for book a hotel room will be cancel the booking. So we just cancel the booking. You are refunded probably for the full price. And again, the same thing for a flight. So we cancel anything, we have our <coughs> money back and we can say that the saga was unsuccessful and it can be retried later or something similar. However, we are again back in a consistent system. So there was a state where we lose some money, we paid some money, and we were holding the resources for some brief period of time, but eventually we get back to a consistent system and we get our money back. You see that this is quite different from original or traditional asset transactions, but it turns out that in many situations this, like, really uh, only, that you are holding resources for just a while is uh, acceptable for many use cases. Just because this can be quite hard to follow if you are seeing this for the first time, I just want to repeat that failure scenario but writing down the individual operation. So again, we are booking the flight, sending the saga, booking the hotel, sending the saga, booking the car, and this fails. So now we are sending the saga cancel me uh, message and we are just calling the compensation action in the same service defined by the same service, they know how to compensate, we will just provide them with the ID of the room, let's say, and again, the same thing for the flight, and then we are finished. So you see that we are holding for a certain quite time, but eventually the compensation is called, and we are getting back to a consistent system. So, acid versus base. As I already were talking previously, we directly lose isolation because other transactions that are running in parallel see that you are already holding one ticket for a flight but you haven't booked anything else and we lose consistency because it's inconsistent state. What Saga actually tried to utilize is a different transactional model which is called BASE and that stands for basically available. Uh, if you are familiar with CAP theorem, uh, are you familiar with CAP theorem? No. Okay, CAP theorem is basically an idea from older paper that in distributed system which you have in which you have components connected throughout the network you can have at most two or three things and that's consistency availability and partition tolerance since you cannot make network reliable at least today you need to choose between consistency and availability acid chooses consistency base uh, chooses availability Soft state, that's basically, uh, again, that because of the individual operations, part can be performed and part isn't, you cannot really say that you know in which state your saga is or your system is, because eventually it can get into some different state. In, it can even be in this state if the messages are already sent but not received. And the most important one is that eventual consistency. So saga guarantees <coughs> you that in some, some, point in the future, the state of the system will become consistent, but we don't know when. So either all of the operations are performed or all the compensation that semantical undos are called for all performed operations. So eventually, if you don't start any new sagas, your system will become consistent. <coughs> I'll just wait for a photos. Should I smile? <laughs> <laughs> There are two different approaches that you can take when you are developing the sagas, and that's decentralization and orchestration. It's 
basically the centralization is what I was showing you so far. You are passing the saga through some definition that can be whatever throughout the different services. And then there is an orchestration where you have, again, some coordinator. Now it's a SAGA coordinator. And this is irresponsible to actually call that individual operations and compensation on your services. So you can either pass SAGA directly to a coordinator or pass it to individual services. But the services needs to end this with the coordinator. And they will tell the coordinator, please call this when there will be potential compensation. So again, every service needs to analyze with the coordinator, so the coordinator is responsible to make the decision to actually compensate or something else. And with that, we are getting to the main uh, point of this talk, and that's MicroProfile LRA, long running actions, which is basically the translation of this saga pattern into a Java world, into MicroProfile specification. Uh, we are currently in RC1, but RC2 is coming this week, hopefully, and GA in uh, next month or so. So it's not still uh, finished, but I will show you <coughs> it to you just in a minute, and hopefully it's stable enough already. And with that, if there are, aren't any questions, please shout the questions as I'm going, if something is not clear. I will just jump to a terminal and I will spend probably the rest of the talk in a terminal. One question about that, because uh, most systems have some auditing, some logging uh, attached to the uh, services, and I presume that using this saga pattern I should also uh, somehow reverse the auditing on those systems. So. Not necessarily, because yeah. in a point of time you are actually holding the resource, so you can log it somewhere, and then you will cancel it. So I don't really see a reason. If you have a use case for this, for sure. But I will show you in a minute. These are going to be basically REST invocations. <coughs> so what you define in your REST invocation is up to you. Could you make the font bigger? Yeah, sure. Even bigger? OK, because the, I will have like quite a lot of terminals open. <laughs> So uh, what I will go uh, to use right now is actually implementation that is available in Narayana Transactional Manager, which is used in Wi-Fi. Uh, there is also implementation currently in Payara, and we expect more in the future. So I will just run this coordinator. It's uh, already a Quarkus service, and we don't need it anymore. So I will just move it away. <laughs> And uh, basically, this coordinator runs on port 8080, and we are allowed to query all active LRAs or all arrays that this coordinator knows of by uh, simple REST calls. So currently, there is no LRA started, so we have an empty array. But I will actually put this into a watch, so you can see when we will be developing different services that uh, we are actually starting something. And with that, I will finally uh, sorry, create uh, actual microservice that we are going to use. I am using Quarkus, but I have my script which is building my local Quarkus. Because we have a pull request open for an extension since last week only. You can use it directly if you put dependencies, but I want to use Quarkus because it's just faster and easier. But in the end, there is a link to a full tutorial. Sorry, I forgot probably to remove the one from yesterday. Uh, there is a link to a tutorial which is using Thorntail as a runtime where you will use uh, normal dependencies, edit, not an extension. But for the demonstration purposes, I will show you to, or repeat this at the end. So just let me see the to LRA service. Again, if you are not familiar with Quarkus, it's basically working on an extension pattern. So we already should have here somewhere, and I can make it bigger. Narayana LRA extension, if I will be able to find it. If someone sees it, it would be nice because I don't see it. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Narayana LRA. Currently, if you just download uh, Quarkus or run the latest version, it won't be there, but hopefully soon the pull request will be matched. So to actually add an extension, here is a <coughs> command to which I need to copy to add an extension. And the search mechanism is really nice, so I can just type LRA here, and it should add my LRA extension. And basically, that's it. Now I can compile this project and run that Quarkus live reload mode. 
make it a little bigger again. And what? <laughs> no, it's not Java. I, I probably have something running on that port because I, I have always like 20 <laughs> different workspaces open and I still, for, ah, yeah, now I know what is the problem. I started the LRA coordinator on port 8080 and I need to start this service on a different port, of course. So if I do Quarkus HTTP port 8081 and just repeat this watch, yeah, live reload demo so you will forget the basic stuff that you already started something on 8080 like two minutes ago. Okay, uh, just because I know that this is usually hard to follow, I prepared labels this time. <laughs> So we will have LRA service uh, somewhere. I hope that you can read this. We have seen, uh, we can see here that this is an LRA coordinator and I will open here a client. So I will just copy paste this again. Oh, sorry. Where did I put it? Different one. <laughs> and one last thing that i forgot to do is to actually open this in idea and we will move this into seven i'm starting starting a project from scratch so it can sometimes make some issues and i will put this into presentation mode and this should be hopefully big enough for you to see so what this is basically only calling maven uh, quarkus create in the background so this will create for us a uh, only a single JAXRS endpoint, I can just demonstrate, sorry, uh, that it's running with HTTP 8081 and that's pink. And yes, it is running, so we can start actually working on our LRA. What that Maven Quarkus add extension only did is it added a Maven dependency, which you can do manually, but if you don't know what the name of the extension is, it's usually better to start with that list, list extensions that I wanted to show you. So with that, let me just create LRA resource, and this will be at LRA, and we can start creating our application, uh, our operation that is actually going to be performed. I will just call it perform call it response from the core, call it perform. And here we will look nicely that we are performing, performing an operation, that we will actually perform the operation. And then I will just return response, okay, built. I don't want to do anything critical. This would be your business action. This is the work that you want to execute inside the transaction. So I will just create a really simple uh, logging so we can see it in a terminal that we are actually doing something. I will just print the parameter and I will that one see out at the end. And our operation that we are going to perform will be only a thread slip so we can see it in, on the coordinator that is actually started. So this is the resource that you probably already have performing your operation, orders, booking the flight, booking the hotel room. To actually put it into an LRA, all you need to do is to add a single annotation at LRA. I will just save it and because I am running Quarkus in a dev mode, I should be already able to call this at LRA perform. And when I call it, it will be replaced. We can see, probably you were able to see that the transaction is started on the coordinator and after two seconds, it's finished. So by default, uh, there are several transactional types, again, with LRA, similar way as uh, with JTA, if you are familiar with it. So I can say here, type, you know, I need to do LRA type. Mandatory nested, never, suspended, supported, sorry, uh, etc. You are probably familiar with this if you are familiar with JTA. The default one is required, which will start a new transaction when the method starts and will finish it when the method ends, <laughs> if there is no transaction re received. I will get to it in a later point of mind, but now, now we are good to go with the default. So now we are already having uh, our transaction, which is started when I'm entering this perform method and completed when I'm finishing it, but nothing is actually ever enlisted inside these transactions because we don't have that compensating action. So let's 
edit. To create a compensation action, as you can see, this is mostly built on top of JAXRS, but that's not required for every, any, everything, and I will get to it in the end. But I will for now stick to uh, JAXRS resources. So I will have my compensate method now. Again, compensation, surprisingly, annotated with compensate, and this will be again a response, compensate. And here I will just log nicely that we are compensating and I can return response okay built so this is my compensation just again a JAXA uh, endpoint which I annotate with another uh, annotation compensate that's it so if I now rerun this nothing will happen because we are actually closing the saga or the LRA successfully. So this will be only invoked if something went wrong. So the compensation will happen. How we can actually make LRA to fail is by returning a different HTTP status code from the LRA annotated method. And what status codes actually make LRA to cancel is defined, sorry, by these two attributes, cancel on and cancel on family. These are only basically HTTP status codes, if you are familiar with response.status, where you can specify that I want to cancel on 412, 404, etc. By default, we are canceling on uh, 4xx and 5xx. So I don't need to type it here because I know that the default is cancel on family. If I just change this 200 to 500, the LRA, sorry, the LRA will now be, instead of closed, compensated and we will get our compensation called. Easy as that. How do you know that he should call this exact method? This is exactly what the specification is for. That, that uh, annotation, at compensate. When you call, when you call this method, uh, annotated with LRA, we actually go in our implementations, scan this class for the at compensate annotation, and we will take this LRA, oh, sorry, this endpoint, save it with the coordinator, and when the yeah, compensation is called. LRA and multiple compensate in the same class? Uh, you can, but then arbitrary one is chosen. There is no point to, you can have multiple at LRA methods, and I will use this later because that makes sense. But having multiple compensation inside one participant of the transaction doesn't make sense. So we but will just pick I them up. use some name at parameters, like name at LRA, name at compensate, to actually join them together. Like you, this you, you can compensate for this LRA, then this is compensate for that LRA. There are two different components. That LRA is starting a new saga. That at compensate is enlisting a participant. And participant is something which needs to be granular to one Java class, one JAXRS resource. So you can start multiple LRAs inside one JAXRS resource, but uh, one JAXRS resource can be only one participant. That, that would be harder for us to really find out what we should call. I will show you in a while, but what you are asking for is just really create a similar class with a, another add compensate method. So I can create here multiple add LRA LRA resources and this would work. So just not in a one class. But what, what I wanted to continue with is to actually turn this back into an okay and show you that there is also another. So basically this at compensate is required to enlist this resource <coughs> as a participant, but there is also a similar uh, endpoint which you can define, which is called complete and that is denoted with the complete annotation. And this is the callback which will be called basically when the LRA is closed successfully and you are enlisting with that compensate action. What can be this used for is, uh, we can do the sa same thing similar, just sorry I will finish the typing and then I will start talking. So response okay built. <coughs> what this can be used for is basically that, imagine that this LRA is actually do performing some order or the booking of the flight. So you probably need to remember that uh, for this particular LRA, I book flight 66. So when the compensation will happen, you can match that this LRA was compensated and you will cancel the flight 66. So you need to remember this flight ID somewhere. And because the LRA was already closed successfully, there is no point to remember it any longer. So you have an option to define this optional complete callback to actually perform any cleanup that you would like to. So you can forget here about that flight ID. One more question. 
Sure. Uh, you are using put method on uh, compensate uh, on uh, a specification. Put this is should, uh, yeah. should, uh, you should provide full resource data. So uh, does it store uh, coordinator or? There is actually a uh, feature request for adding this option of some data that can be passed to a coordinator, but we decided to not do it for Vandado because there are a lot of issues. It's transactional framework that we need to deal with. But yeah, this is on the roadmap that we want to cover. For now, it's up to you to actually uh, save the data inside your services. So I can do here some normal ACID transaction, for instance, and per, uh, save something to a database. And here I can take it out. So what I wanted to just show you that this com complete will be called now instead of the compensate. So if I just repeat this call after two seconds, we should have our complete com uh, callback called. So easy as that. Uh, Good. So I meant uh, because put method should use in body full. So how, how is here? Uh, looks like uh, request <laughs> this for this. There are actually, from a uh, coordinator, we are passing some compensation data, but it's only something that is internal to the saga itself. I can show it to you, but really, uh, my, I personally don't agree with using JaxRS for this at all. <laughs> and we already have a support in the specification, just Nariana is still not, uh, didn't catch up. So I will actually show you the specification itself. So this is the whole specification, MicroProfile LRA ap API. We have here only annotation package with this WSRS, and you can see here that LRA is in this and at leave. These are the only two annotations which are right now required to be on JaxRS resources. All of these other ones that I am showing to you, Compensate Complete, doesn't need to have. Uh, we will expose a JaxRS endpoint for you, and we will call it basically any CDI bean uh, method for you. But it doesn't work now, right now, with the Quarkus. We are getting to it because we just need to finish our implementation in Ariana. But yeah, th this is like really a good point. If you want to really follow the REST principles, this doesn't do it. <laughs> so, okay, so this would be the basically the usage of basic usage of LRA. Uh, I told you that you need to somehow associate the invocation. Yeah. We are starting right now only a single LRA and we are enlisting a single resource, so we know that it's the same uh, LRA and the same resource. But you can call this method several times with different IDs, so you have this single resource enlisted in different LRAs in a multiple, in the same time. So you need some way to ha somehow know that now this particular LRA was compensated. And how we are doing this in a specification is by header parameters in a LRA itself. And the most important one is this LRA HTTP context header or long running action, which is always an URI, if I can import it, yeah. Which is basically our LRA ID and I can just edit here. And actually, this will be passed to every invocation on, of every method that you are going to ever use an LRA annotation on. So I can put it into my complete and compensate if, and if I now return, uh, repeat the same method, we will see that we get some URI. And I didn't put it in, uh, I didn't put it into log, sorry. But you see that the U URI is actually an URL inside of Narayana, and we are actually using it for also for recovery of the transaction. But I don't think that I will have a space to do it today. And if I now repeat the transaction, we can see that the newly started transaction ended with 23, and we were compensating the same transaction. So in this sense, you can match that order ID with particular array that is being compensated. There is also one more. <coughs> Would the compensate part itself fails? Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. If the invocation fails? Yeah. Uh, well, the basically, we will repeat the calls until it succeeds. This is the transactional guarantee that there is that coordinator which will start the recovery if it cannot comp uh, contact all that compensating actions. And we will basically, after some timeout, which is by default two minutes, I think, call it again. And if it fails, again, 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 until we can reach a decision. 
there is also a possibility because you understand now we are going to invoke that compensation multiple times and probably your compensation action is not going to be idempotent. So you don't want to uh, invoke it several times. There is also an option in the LRA specification to define a status method, but I will not have time to do it now. And if you have in the same JAXRS resource also this status method, if the compensator invocation fails, we will instead call the status method. So you can check your state in a different method, which can be idempotent, and if you re uh, respond that yes, I am now already compensated, we will finish the transaction. But the compensate will be called only once. Mm -hmm. so, Does, sorry. so the compensator doesn't store the state? Compensate will only pass you this LRA ID, which I showed you, and also a subscription ID, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But the state, we don't know what the state is. This is up to you, and that's to your question. We are working in 1.1. One one. We would like to have an option for you to store the state actually in the framework itself, something small, some string or something similar, and this would be passed with the put invocation. But right now, with 1.0, we decided to rather skip it, because the framework itself, it looks simple, but the implementation is not. <laughs> so OK, I was talking about that. Uh, participant ID or that subscription ID, where did I lose the cursor? And that's, again, another header param, which we will take from the LRA annotation, and that's this long-running action recovery or HTTP recovery header. This is basically a subscription ID. This allows me to enlist this particular participant within multiple LRAs. So this will be, again, passed to every invocation of compensate and complete. Just it's a lot of, again, a different URI, so I just don't want to put it there. But this will allow me to start multiple LRAs and enlist this resource to multiple LRAs. So LRA HTTP context header, long-running action is LRA ID, and this long-running action recovery is subscription ID or participant ID within a particular LRA. So even one resource can be enlisted multiple times within the same LRA but you can have only one compensation. So okay, I will just not do this right now just to really save some space in the terminals. And uh, with that, I, we have a single resource now that is starting, joining the LRA, and finishing it. So it's not really distributed. So what I'm going to do right now is to actually start a new service. Sorry, I will make it bigger and start it basically just by copying it, the same service into LRA service 2, and I will open that in the IDE, and again, I will put it into McFarcus dev mode, but this time I will take care to use a free port. Hopefully, if this starts, yes, it does. We have here our LRA service 2, which is right now the same service as the first one. And here I can start explaining what this LRA uh, annotation can be configured with. So I already show you this value parameter, which is of LRA type. <laughs> and here we have like a typical JTA types, if you're familiar with it. What I'm going to, I'm not going to go through all of them that are really nicely documented even in LRA specification. What I'm going to do use now is LRA type mandatory. This just says that the LRA ID, when this method is invoked, must be received. And if it's not, we will return a precondition failed 412. And what it means to receive an LRA ID is basically to receive this HTTP context header. This is the way how you can propagate the ID yourself. So now I will switch back to the LRA service one, and now I need to perform an HTTP request to LRA service two. And for that, I actually, because Quarkus doesn't really like normal REST client, I need to add a new extension. And that's uh, REST client, I think. I will just type it here, REST client, to my LRA service one. You see that Quarkus is even clever enough right now that it is I am able to change the POM XML and it will restart. So I can add dependency on the fly. I haven't stopped, stopped this service still, uh, still and, ah, since I started typing, <laughs> sorry. So now I should have my REST client already here. We can verify that it's here. Yes, it is. And I will show you really quickly a different microprofile specification and I will create LRA service 
to API REST client. So to do a REST client, all you need to do uh, register REST client and then you will type a normal JAXA REST resource basically, it just needs to be an interface. And here I will do the same thing as I have in my LRA service too. Just get uh, at LRA perform, slash perform, and here we will do, uh, and we can do even void call, and this should be it. I can do one more step and to actually set the base URI, since I know that I'm only going to invoke my localhost already here, so I can say that this will be localhost 8082, and I have created an REST client, basically. Uh, for this particular example, it's not that important, just Quarkus doesn't really want to play with me with the client builder right now. So to use it in my LRA resource, I will, for, just to make sure, make it application scope. I should have done this in the beginning because by default it will be request code, which is unnecessary for my use case. And I will inject REST client which is my LRA service to API. And I should be able to now make the call here just like this. So this will make now an HTTP call to 8082 slash LRA slash perform. And hopefully if I typed everything correctly, if I now repeat and I will give you the last label, LRA service two, if I now repeat the call to LRA service, it should call LRA service two, and both of these should be, yes, should be enlisted within the same LRA, and you can see that the completion was called on both services. So now we have truly a distributed transaction running on my local host, propagating the LRA ID and calling the compensation on of both services. Again, if I go back to LRA service two, and now I will fail this transaction, Again, I will set the status to 500, just save it, <coughs> repeat the call. After two seconds, compensation will be called and please ignore this uh, because this is from REST client, this error, but we can see that the compensation is coming. It's just REST client is telling me that the status responded with 500, but I did it, so I know that it will respond with 500. Let's just put this back. And uh, what I want to show you, probably you noticed that there was a log message in the LRA service when we, even when we were comp uh, completing this one, which is basically saying that we were trying to close the LRA in LRA service one, but that LRA service one perform method ended, but it was not found on the coordinator anymore. And that's because by default, LRA annotation, now we are in LRA service two, by default, LRA annotation will end uh, when the method ends. So in LRA service one, we were invoking mandatory endpoint in LRA service two, and when this method in LRA service two ends, the transaction is closed. So when we are returning from a call to LRA service one, and that, then the, again, the transaction will be tried to be closed, there is no more transaction. So if I want to just get rid of that message, I will uh, type here end false, and that basically just say that even when this LRA method will finish, just don't close it. So if I just rerun this again, I should get rid of that last message, and we are closing now successfully in LRA service one again. One, uh, there are two more things that I want to show you. Are there any questions? Yeah, right now? about that, because that feels uh, extremely hacky. Why? Uh, because <coughs> I think the coordinator should know that this is uh, like embedded transaction, because this the second transaction is added in this particular, uh, oper particular situation is embedded inside another transaction. So it not necessarily. As, as like that. Not necessarily, because I will get uh, to my last example. You can start an LRA in some like utility service, let's say, then propagate it wherever you want, and take my example with the business trip. So we will start the transaction in airplane service, propagate it through hotel, and car needs to compensate. So why would you return this whole chain back to the airplane service, and then the coordinator needs to call the services, if you know that you need to compensate already in car service? I think that the client should, should do it, like, uh, this will be this, the same like with regular transactions, you have uh, like the 
Yes, we, this was a design have, when decision. When you have a regular transaction, there is a client that is calling this method. And it, uh, in that way, it is just Java. So you just call from Java method perform. There is a, is the invocation is then intercepted and transaction is started. Then uh, any transaction inside there will just continue the already running transaction. And now, and we, now we are already... Yeah, 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 I get it. will end in the correct way. So you, you are not forced to just... This, this is the basic of just transaction management. And now we are getting into an issue that I'm running to since I started with this specification that people still think about this as IC transaction JTA. This is mm -hmm. not it. We are innovating something new. It just seems like a transaction, but it's not JTA. This was a design decision that we made because we want to save network calls. This is like really the main reasoning and we are sticking by it. <laughs> okay, so I have five minutes left and I would like to show you some two things basically so i will just make it really fast and i will skip my last slides there is also an option to add uh, another endpoint here which we will call after and there is another annotation called after lra which is basically only a callback that is going to be invoked every time that the transaction any transaction that passed through this particular resource it doesn't need to be even a participant uh, will be invoked so you can do after LRA listeners. So it, you can watch for some LRAs, log them, for instance, or do something else. And you don't need to join them if you don't want to join them. So you don't need to create these empty compensations or something similar. So this will be really just, as, again, as, sorry, response. Let's call it after. <laughs> and what? What I want to show you here is that since we expect that the use case for this method will be to actually start a new LRA, so when some LRA is closed, I want to start a new one. Uh, we actually added a new header here, which is long running action ended. If you want the LRA of the ID, which ended, and here you will finally get a payload, which is an LRA status. <laughs> so this is a valid put invocation. And we can here just do here after plus ended LRA ID plus uh, status and just return response uh, okay build. This is nothing fancy, just really to show you that you have an option to also define something which seems like a participant but it's not if you have a use case for it. So you can see that after the LRA was finished, we got our after invocation with the state of the LRA. So you can do this kind of auditing and make a decision dynamically if to start a new LRA or not. And if you start the new LRA, inside this method, you can use then LRA HTTP context header to get the newly started LRA inside this method. So uh, with that, the last thing that I want to show you is to actually not close this LRA at all. So I will put even in LRA service one and false. So this is the use case that I will, wanted to show you. And I will create a new LRA endpoint, which will be just slash end. And I will add another at LRA method. This is like really transforming now this resource, which was originally a participant doing something useful in the perform method into a really more LRA utility class. So it will be responsible for starting and stopping the LRA. Just start it, propagate it somewhere. We can actually even return that LRA ID, and I will need it here to assist string uh, to the user. So I can call this service, get an ID, then propagate it through different services. And when I decide to close it, I can close it manually. So this would be one of the use cases that you were uh, asking about. So I will just do here response uh, close. And I will actually make this also a mandatory because I want to know which LRA I am closing and I just I can explicitly type here true even if it's not required. And I will uh, also inject here the context header, LRA ID, which I am closing, just log nicely and LRA ID and I will return that I want to finish successfully. So what will now happen if I run this is basically all our operations are performed. You see that the perform was called in LRA service one, in LRA service two. 
but we are already finished with our invoca client invocation and the LRA is still active. So this, in this way, it will stay active until somebody really calls it. And I returned the LRA ID to myself here. So to actually just close the LRA, I will call that an endpoint that I defined. Oh, sorry, LRA end. And I need to pass the LRA ID manually here. So I just will copy paste this and paste it here. And in that sense, when I call this method, all of compensation competitions are called after LRA are called and we see that LRA is finished. So with that, I will just really quickly go back to slides. I should have five minutes, yeah, 25, that's great. So what I show you here, basically the state model is precisely defined in a specification document. When you start the LRA, it is, it is in a LRA state active, that's before the competition and competition start to be called. When you close, it's closed, then you cancel, it's canceled. But there are uh, also possibility to state from the compensation manually that you are unable to complete or compensate with returning a specific uh, payload back, which is a participant status. If you state that you are failed to complete or fail to compensate, we are basically stuck. Uh, we don't really know what this means for a particular application, so it is only required from a specification point of view to load this somewhere and probably some manual intervention is needed. But as somebody here was already asking, there is also this immediate state, closing and cancelling, into which, in which we are basically in a state that we are calling compensation or competition methods. In complete and in compensate, if you return uh, HTTP status accepted, 202, it basically saying you that you are not able to compensate right now, but you want to be called again somewhere else. So you don't need, really need to fail the invocation to get your compensation, uh, compensation or that status method invoked. All you need to do is return 212, 202 from that complete or compensate. In that sense, this method will be invoked again or that status will be invoked again. So really that fail to state should be reserved to really something where you need some human really to look into the outcome and some really manual intervention is needed. I'm sorry that I'm not able to show you, but this is like a really little advanced concept already in a specification. So if you want to use this in your project, this app is uh, API dependency. We are working on RC2, which should be done this week, hopefully, and the Narayana, which I was using, is this one. Uh, however, the Quarkus extension is already open PR, so hopefully it will be merged soon in the next Quarkus release. And with that, this is everything from my side, and this just a little. You can find me on social media, and thank you for your attention.